Okay, good afternoon everybody and thank you for joining us on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. We are studying Pirkei Avot, chapter 5, Mishnah 23, following us along in the web version, it's going to be Mishnah 20. Yehuda ben Tema Omer, our author is Yehuda ben Tema, and he says the following powerful idea. Heve az kanamer, be bold like a leopard, vekal kanesher, but be swift and and light excuse me light like an eagle verat kasebi be swift like a deer vegibor kaari and be strong like a lion laasot retzon avicha sheba shamayim to do the will of your father in heaven and what you Rabbi uh, Yehuda ben Tema is saying is that in life when it comes to Certain areas we need to be as bold. What does it mean, bold? A leopard is not the strongest animal, but a leopard is gutsy. A leopard will undertake any task. A leopard will do whatever is necessary to be done. So sometimes in life we want to do something, but we're a little bit embarrassed. We're ashamed. What are people going to say? They're going to see me. I'll give you an example. You're in the airport. And it's time to pray. People are going to make fun of me, putting my tefillin on. They're going to laugh at Jews. I want to represent Judaism and I want to make them have a good image of us. Blah, 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 blah. Never, never let the Yetzara convince you to be embarrassed, to be bold, to have chutzpah. Yeah? That's a Right? Az kanamir. When the Arabs need to pray, they pray. They stop in the middle of the street. They open up their carpet. I was in a cab one time and the guy was shaking. He's looking at his watch. He's looking at me. I'm like, oh my God, this guy has a bomb, you know? <laughs> All of a sudden, he stops the car. I'm like, oh my God, he's going to kill me. He stops the car. He's like, I will be back. He runs to the back. He opens his trunk. I was going to pull out a rocket launcher. I'm telling you. I, sa- I started saying Shema Israel. All of a sudden he pulls out his carpet. He pours it on the floor. He starts praying. It was sunset. He had to pray. He didn't care. Business, no business. The meter was still running. I mean, I don't know how we worked that out. But, you know, he, they, they pray. We have to do a mitzvah. Be az. Be bold. Be stubborn. Never let the Yetzirah tell you that you're going to, you know, look bad. If somebody was paying you a million dollars to walk around smelling like sewer, but they would pay you a million dollars, would you do it? I dare think that everyone here would say yes. I would do it. For a million dollars, I would do it. Forget a million half a million deal a quarter million I'll do it right we would do crazy things for money for money we would do a lot of things that maybe are embarrassing we wouldn't care people are gonna laugh at us would it bother you if someone laughed at you that you're walking around and you smell you wouldn't you wouldn't care laugh away because I'm gonna make a million dollars laugh all day deep down we know we're laughing when it comes to doing mitzvot, we should feel the same way. Don't matter if people are going to laugh. Don't let, let them laugh. Who cares? You know what you're doing is right. You know what you're doing is what God wants. And therefore, do it. When it comes to doing a mitzvah, run. Pursue. Be bold. Don't let anyone tell you, oh, you look like a fool. You look like a clown. You look silly. Take off that kippah. You're dressing too religious. You're keeping uh, Shabbat. Everyone's laughing at you. Who keeps Shabbat these days, right? Don't let anyone tell you that. However, however, Mesilai Sharim does add, this is only true when it comes to mitzvot. Mitzvot, yes. We have to be, do whatever it takes, even if it means being ridiculed. Better to be ridiculed this entire world than to be laughed at for one second in the next world. But that's only true in mitzvot. When it comes to chumrot, 
when it comes to stringencies, when it comes to extras, let's say a person does a thing that's extra. It's not required by halakha. It's an extra. I'm not going to give an example. You think of an example. Whatever it is. Okay, it's nice. You want to do extra. That's great. But if it's causing people to laugh at you, then it's time to stop. On mitzvot, don't worry what people say. Be az. But on chumrot, over there, Mesilai Yishalim says, then one needs to be respectable and don't do things that will make people laugh at you. Okay. So that's very powerful. That's very powerful. To make sure that we are, again, courageous, bold, a little bit arrogant, stubborn. Stubborn, yeah? You want to laugh at me? You want to laugh at me? You wanna, yeah, yeah, I'll show you. I'm going to wear tefillin all day long in the airport. So, okay, obviously we shouldn't do that, right? But we should, we should have a little bit of chutzpah. To be az is important for, uh, for the mitzvot. Also, we should be courageous to do certain tasks that maybe seem difficult to overcome our fears. Has there ever been something that you were afraid of that you conquered? Ask yourself that question. Feel free to write it down on the side. I, I have one. I grew up very afraid of public speaking. <laughs> Believe it or not. I got up there, I froze. I couldn't even sing like in a choir. I would like, oh my God. Right? I would shake. Right? And that's something that I conquered. The Zoom keeps freezing. Okay, I'm sorry. But um, we'll have the recording after. Okay, I'm trying my best. No, that was me. I just froze. Maybe that's what you saw. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Um, next. Um, yeah. Another idea of here. Heve'az kanamir means that if we're a student and the teacher is teaching something, we should be courageous enough to ask five times, ten times, no matter how many times, uh, Rabbi, I don't understand. Could you repeat it? Uh, okay, I'll repeat it for you. They repeated it. We still don't understand. Repeat it again, Rabbi. I didn't get it. Please, if you don't mind. To be strong. To pursue the teacher. Pursue the lesson. There's a question. Something doesn't clear. Go for it again and again and again. You know, it's an amazing story with a rabbi in the Gemara that he taught a student. You ready? He had to teach him 400 times. He was very thick. The kid didn't go in. He had to teach him 400 times in order for the lesson to be incorporated. Well, one time, the rabbi sat, and you can imagine the patience to teach a kid 400 times. One day, the rabbi comes in, he says, okay, let's listen, let's try to do this quickly because I have to go soon. Someone's going to come in and I have, to, I have to meet them. Kid said, okay. The rabbi sat down, he told him, once, 10, 50, 100, 400 times. All right, you got it? And the kid said, actually, I didn't get it. He's like, well, come on. We did it 400 times. I thought 400 is the number. You usually get it. He's like, I know, I know. But every, every second, I was like looking at the door. I was nervous that the guy's going to come in and interrupt. And we would never finish the 400. So my mind wasn't there. I'm sorry. The rabbi's like, oh my God. Okay, listen, forget about the door. No one's coming in. Just focus, okay? It's just me and you. Let's go. And he repeated it another 400 times. And a heavenly voice came out and said to the rabbi, amazing what you did, and you will either inherit Olam Haba for your entire generation or you will live very long. And he asked for the first, and Hashem said, I'm going to give you both. And you know, many people are very impressed from this rabbi. Look at the patience. And yes, it is very impressive. But you know what's also impressive? The student. What a student that's able to sit there and to ask again, can you teach me? I, he wasn't embarrassed. I would have been like, yeah, I got it, Rabbi. I'll see you tomorrow. And I would run an open art scroll, you know? He didn't care. He was as kanamir. That's very powerful. Next. Kal kanesher. To be swift as an eagle. To be light as an eagle. This means many things. 
But something that, uh, interpretation that I saw that was beautiful, that connects to the first. An eagle goes, eagle goes very high. But you ever saw it catch something from low? Like if you get a snake, right? Swoops, boom, a dive. Catches whatever it needs to, right? An uh, eagle knows how to swoop down where necessary. In life, we need to swoop down where necessary. Whenever we are in front of someone that's greater than us, someone that knows more than us, we have to have the humility to let them speak. Next, Ratz to Katsevi, to, to be quick like a gazelle. Yeah, a deer, quick like a deer. Right, when it comes to doing mitzvot, we got to run. Don't be lazy. Right, just like when it comes to making money, we run. When it comes to doing mitzvot, we got to run. Like a deer runs. Deer doesn't get tired. It runs all day long. We got to run to do mitzvot. To be the, what we call zariz. To be active and quick. If a mitzvah comes, don't let it sit. The pasuk says, Ush martemet hamatzot. You should watch the matzah. On Pesach, when you're making matzah, you have to watch it. Make sure no water, no moisture. It doesn't sit. You have to constantly watch the matzah. But you know what? If you write, that, write out matzot, write it out. Mem, tzadi, vav, taf. You read it, it, it looks like another word. What does it look like? Without nekudot. Mitzvot, very good. The pasuk could also be read. Ushmarte mitam mitzvot. Watch the mitzvah. When a mitzvah comes your way, don't let it sit. Don't let it get spoiled. Don't let it become chametz. Don't procrastinate. A mitzvah is here to do it. Do it now. Don't delay. Not only that, but when we left Egypt, the Zohar says that if we would have stayed for one more minute, we would have dropped to the lowest level of Tumah. It would have been too late. We would have never gotten out. When it comes to mitzvot, we have to always feel like, Im lo achshav ematai. If I don't do it now, I may never get a chance again. We have to be very careful to seize our moments. In life, they come. Mitzvot come our way. People come our way. But you got to grab them. Don't delay. Don't say, okay, I'll get it another day. Someone calls for shiduch. Take it. Ah, I don't know. Let me think. They may not be available. They may get taken. You know, the halakha even allows a person to get engaged in the three weeks. If you're worried someone else is going to take her, do it now. In life, things move. Someone gives you an opportunity, take it. In business, in relationships, with God, with mitzvot, doesn't matter. No, do it. Obviously, it has to be a good deal. It has to be something to consider. Think about it. But once you think about it and it makes sense, then don't waste. Don't procrastinate. Don't delay. Run. Ratzkatsebi. Be quick. Grab it. The Jews, if they would have waited one more minute, they would have never left Egypt. Sometimes in life, we are able to break free. We are able to go and do things. But if we delay, we may lose that chance. You think about people that, you know, in Corona, they had an opportunity to buy certain equipment. You say, ah, I'll wait a week. I'll wait two weeks. You wait two weeks, that's it. You lost. You, you lose out. Dan's deal. Flights, glitch, $30 instead of $300. Happened to me one time. <laughs> Book it. Don't think. Don't ask. Do it. It's vot. You got to run. Ratzka tevi. And finally, gibor ka'ari. It's strong and courageous like a lion. Of course, this refers to the Yetzir Hara who comes to us many times and will try to convince us to do the wrong thing. And that is when we must Get up and be strong and say, yeah, you're going to fight me? Don't give in to him. He beat us too many times already. We're too old for that. How many times are you going to let him play us? Time to fight back. You're not going to take me down anymore. Fight. It's hard. It's a fight, but do it. Fight. Like a lion, fight. Like we learned in Perkei earlier. Ezehu gibor... Who is the strong one? Real strength is he who conquers his inclination. 
You know, something very powerful over here. The Mishnah ends off with the following words. La'asot retzon avicha shebashamayim. When it comes to doing the will of your Father in Heaven. You see, all of these midot that we listed today, that we learned about, to be bold, to be quick, to be aggressive and strong, they're not necessarily positive midot. If I said, you know, I have someone here that's very stubborn. You want to date him? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm okay. Right? I don't want someone stubborn. Stubborn is not a good thing. To be like a leopard, stubborn, is not so good. However, we learn this so many times. Every trait has the right time and the wrong time. Even to be stubborn, there is a time to apply it. Be stubborn when it comes to doing the right thing. When it comes to doing mitzvot. When it comes to doing great things. That's where you should be stubborn. When it comes to an argument that you're having with your spouse, over there, be flexible. Sometimes we're doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. When it comes to doing a mitzvah, ah, I don't know, I want to be flexible. I'm embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Be embarrassed when you're fighting with your wife. That's when you should be embarrassed. When it comes to doing a mitzvah, be stubborn. Do it. Don't worry about what people are going to say. Running. Running could be bad. You're running to, to, to temptations. Running to do averot. But running could be good. Rat katevi. To do Hashem's will. To be like a lion and strong and aggressive. Sometimes not so good. It's cruelty. It could be, you know, too, too controlling. If I tell you someone's very controlling, you know, I don't want that. But if it's someone who controls his yetzer hara, that I want. That's amazing. That's great. So again, it's knowing when to apply which midah. Very powerful lessons for today. Either way, I think there's enough to think about. We'll stop over here. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.